Welcome to Net Positive. In today's episode, we are showcasing the world's fastest solar-powered electric water ski boat. We consult on the pure electric lifestyle, everything from solar power to heat pumps and vehicle propulsion. My lifelong passion for engineering solar electric vehicles became Net Positive in 2014 with the building of a 42 mile an hour electric bike. This was powered by cordless drill batteries, had a range of 30 miles, and despite the silly basket on the front was a blast to ride. The decision to demonstrate the pure electric lifestyle meant purchasing several electric vehicles and installing a large solar array. In order to tow a boat and haul materials, receiver hitches needed to be installed. This proved to be a major undertaking on both the BMW i3 and the ludicrous Tesla Model S. After nervously reassembling the entire back end of both of these cars, the finished product turned out well. Uh, the massive torque that these vehicles has makes for effortless towing, and the receiver also works well as an accessory for bike and ski racks. In order to minimize weight as much as possible, we opted for a rib or rigid inflatable boat, which is a very seaworthy and dry boat, which is quite desirable when installing 40 kilowatt hours of battery. We also bought a non-working two-cycle outboard for the conversion. And fixing the broken skeg gave me some uh, much needed welding practice, a skill I would need uh, lots of for making the uh, motor mounts. I removed the gas power head, exhaust, and all gas powered components from the engine and uh, mounted the basic lower unit on the boat and installed the oil-cooled electric motor uh, atop the lower unit and fabricated aluminum mounts for all of this. We then made significant modifications to a new Shorelander trailer to accommodate this type of boat with special front straps. In the warehouse, working on the rigid inflatable boat conversion to electric, I've got the Tracker 40 horse motor which after disassembling and removing all of the exhaust and power head and, and gas components we're going to get ready to convert it to electric. Made a spindle adapter out of parts like these welded together and machined out so that it fits on the spindle shaft of the outboard lower unit and this will adapt to the one and an eighth key away where the electric motor is going to sit. The custom made motor mount is made of two plates of half inch thick aluminum which were cut to shape to fit the lower unit and welded to another plate that will bolt to the motor itself the spacing of the motor and the lower unit is up several inches as you can see here uh, due to the difference in shaft uh, dimensions. And here is the battery bracket with the bridge cut out welded in. And preparing the boat's electronics package we've got uh, controller wires, uh, high current co contactors for our disconnects, uh, DC to DC converter. This will allow us to switch the 144 volts from the batteries down to 12 volts for the rest of the systems. And the main controller, which is a heavy aluminum plated controller attached to a, another plate for a heat sink. We'll... So here, fairly well finished up, is the motor mount, which was rather time consuming. So that bolts the lower unit to the motor mounting plate. And getting ready to fire it up for the first time. Uh, still need to fasten the batteries in a little better under the seat there, but that's what those look like. And I still have some cable dressing work to do back here. But uh, let's see how it goes. All right, the ignition switch is on. We'll roll forward with the throttle cable. Or throttle. So yeah, it does not like the throttle for reverse. I'm going to have to do mechanical linkage because of the way that the lower unit is built. Okay, so we're testing the first test of under load. Enough 
for us to uh, move us about. My word, you can't even hear it running. Just a little. The short circuit protection circuitry of the batteries was kicking in, preventing enough current from flowing, so we added this string of 12 batteries to up our current, and that failed, so we went with Tesla batteries as pictured here, which we uh, had to charge using the solar panels initially to match the voltages the complicated battery management system and the heavier gauge wires we installed here to deliver the power adequately gave us a higher top speed and fast planing and there she goes How the thing is moving. Here we have the high speed cleaver prop that's designed to penetrate the surface at high speeds. I look forward to trying that out uh, at full power, not just the 85% we were at. Next, we installed a ski pylon in order to test out the water skiing capability of the boat. In order to improve performance skiing, we added five degrees of wedge to the motor. That helps us trim the, the nose down a little bit faster. And we've added this uh, Sport Hydrofoil, which will help uh, planing speeds further and then come out of the water as the boat is planed to reduce drag. The uh, air-cooled motor that we ended up having to switch to is actually an 88 horsepower. It's got a little bit more juice than the original liquid-cooled motor. This is actually a uh, 15 horsepower golf cart motor that was reworked by two companies in California. Uh, to, to reach the 88 horsepower by converting it to three-phase synchronous AC. And then this is the uh, little bit lower pitch, but better planing prop for water skiing. Ready to water ski with the electric boat for the first time. I'm all suited up and ready to freeze my butt. repurposed the gas filler port. Plug her in when you're done skiing for the day. She'll recharge in about four and a half hours on a 240 volt circuit. This concludes today's episode. Please stay tuned to this channel, Net Positive, for up and coming videos on upgrades to this boat and also electric tractors, electric cars, motorcycles, solar power, or heat pumps.